Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm showing you this large charcoal portrait of Willie Stargell, a baseball player and a Hall of Famer. I mostly use this Kohinoor Hardmouth Joconda extra charcoal pencil and I'm going to be taking you through the drawing process. It's a slightly larger drawing this time. It's about 11 times 14 inches in size, which is a fairly large portrait at least in comparison to what I normally do. So this is an old uh, baseball player and I al I've already done a drawing of a famous baseball player who was his teammate and that was Roberto Clemente. So now I'm doing this one. It's also a commissioned drawing and the first part of the drawing was his cap uh, with a lot of these uh, these uh, stars and that part was uh, a little bit tedious because I tend to dislike everything that involves any any kind of precision and where I have to be careful not to draw over the lines and uh, where I have to be accurate so I don't really like I, I don't really enjoy those types of drawings but sometimes I have to do that so here I had to do a little bit of work on those details and I said that I mostly used a charcoal pencil which is a, a Kohinoor Joconda extra charcoal pencil but in addition to that I also used a black colored pencil here and there just for some of the details and to work around some of the edges. So I skipped over a part here because uh, I didn't record the entire process but I recorded at least 90% of it, so I think you'll be able to see most of it. And now I'm working on the rim of the cap and his hair. All of this is fairly dark, so I'm putting down a lot of charcoal here. And this is a very soft charcoal pencil, so it's uh, producing a lot of residue, as you can imagine. So uh, one of the things that was a little bit annoying while working with it was the fact that I had to uh, keep cleaning up because there was a lot of charcoal uh, dust lying around and on the paper so in order to prevent myself from creating a mess I had to keep cleaning up all the time I zoomed in a little bit here so that you can see some more of the detail because I'm starting to work on the eyes here and now you can see also what a fine tip I have on this uh, Joconda charcoal pencil these can actually be sharpened pretty well. I normally work with woodless charcoal pencils but these are also pretty good because you can sharpen them almost as well as, uh, as a graphite pencil. They are quite a bit softer naturally and as you can see they are very da dark. This one uh, is uh, designated 8811 2 uh, there are several grades and number two is the soft one I think and uh, as you can see I'm doing the eye I left a white circle for a reflection or a highlight in the eye and now I'm doing a little bit more of the eyebrows now everything looks a little bit flat right now but it's going to start to take shape once I start shading the the eyeball and around the eyeball as you will see so he has fairly dark uh, eyes dark uh, irises and because of the lighting on my reference photo it's also a little bit difficult to make out where the pupil ends and the iris begins but I'm sticking to my reference photo I, uh, there's no need to make too much uh, variation in there and to get too creative I do have a high quality reference photo and now I'm using a brush to spread all of that charcoal around the eye and the fact that this is soft charcoal is making my job a lot easier so now I'm gonna use a slightly uh, different approach I'm just gonna leave out a few more of these highlights in the eye and I'm gonna shade the rest of the eyeball 
as you can see even the whites of the eye need to be shaded so that the highlights would stand out because the when the eye is in the shadow even the whites of the eye are a little bit darker I mean relative to uh, to, to the highlights but naturally I need to make the skin around them even darker so there are a lot of dark tones in this portrait which is why I chose to do most of the work with this soft charcoal pencil I thought it, uh, that it would be perfect for this drawing and in a way I was right because it allowed me to cover large dark areas very quickly but at the same time I found that a lot of this soft charcoal was um, a bit messy and it didn't really stick to the surface of the paper too much. I normally work on smoother types of paper I'm not really sure if, uh, if a different type of paper would have a better grip on that charcoal dust but it doesn't really matter because I kept pushing the charcoal into the grain of the paper using my blending tools so at this point I really like the way the eye turned out and how the highlights in the eye, the reflections stand out nicely and here I was already moving on to the other eye so sometimes I start with shading the larger areas and sometimes I start with the details and sometimes I just go back and forth as you will see in this eye I'm doing the same thing I'm leaving the white space for the for the highlights just trying to reserve that white space and trying not to cover it with charcoal later and I'm doing the other eye he also has fairly thick and dark eyelashes as well which is why I'm drawing these thick uh, dark lines on the upper edge of the eyes and there's also a little bit of shadow here because his eyes are kind of deep set especially in this transition between the nose and the eye socket so th that's a darker area here so that's why I'm adding a little bit more charcoal there this reference photo was probably made when he was already a little bit older I think his nickname was Pops and now moving on to the nose I left the eye for now I'm gonna do the blending a little bit later as you can see one of the things I like to do is I like to draw in or fill in some of these darkest areas on my drawing and then I can proceed with uh, mid-tones. That's not always my approach. Sometimes I start with the lighter tones and lighter areas, but so sometimes I start from the darkest ones. So you can choose what to do as long as the end result looks good. Um, so he has a nice smile and some very thick bushy mustache as well as the eyebrows so I'm going to be using a lot of charcoal there right now I'm just doing a little bit of initial shading around the mouth but not too much because um, this is not the finished look of those uh, mustache I'm just uh, doing that to give myself a rough idea where they're going to be and the same goes for this t-shirt and the collar I'm just sort of drawing around the head and the face just to frame the face to make my job a little bit easier and now I'm gonna start laying down a little bit more charcoal a little bit more boldly because I need to cover all of this white area this is a fairly large portrait as you can see and uh, it's covering a large part of this paper so it's mostly the head and the face and uh, because it's a large portrait it takes a little bit of uh, time to cover all of it but at one point I kind of grew a little bit impatient and I just decided to add a little bit of value all over the face and just add or take away uh, value where needed a little bit later so I just wanted to make everything a little bit darker to begin with and then later I would start refining uh, the individual parts of the face and uh, defining the topography of the face 
I think you can already begin to see some of the indications of shapes on his face like for example around the cheekbones and around the nose so it's not like I'm not uh, making any suggestions of shapes I'm already doing a little bit of initial initial shading and I, I already have a range of value but I just wanted to cover most of it to establish the base tone the basic tone and uh, as you can see occasionally I do some cleaning up with a kneaded eraser I always prefer to use a kneaded eraser for cleaning up because it doesn't leave any residue and it just allows me to lift up the charcoal without damaging the paper like I said this is a very soft pencil and there was a lot of residue in all parts of this drawing process which was a little bit annoying at times but it's just something you have to deal with when you're working with charcoal charcoal has its advantages and disadvantages and one of the advantages is that it's usually a lot faster to work uh, with than graphite a portrait like this would be much 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 slower in graphite because it would take a uh, longer time to build up these dark values and of course you wouldn't be able to produce these dark values in graphite because graphite isn't really black it's mostly dark gray while this soft charcoal pencil is actually pitch black and it, it allows you to create some very very dark tones there's going to be a few highlights on the nose as well and uh, I'm just doing a little bit of initial work with a tutelian. You can see that I did a lot of uh, drawing, if you want to call it that way, with my tutelian because uh, I, at one point I just stopped using a pencil and I started using the charcoal that I lay, laid down during that initial shading, the, uh, shading phase and I started using the tutelian to draw some shapes as well as blend and further define the topography of the face. <coughs> Another tool that I'm using obviously is the brush and my idea here is to define the larger areas of lighter and darker value first before I move in with the details and the textures and the uh, smaller details on the face and the skin. <coughs> so I think I'm uh, pretty much uh, finishing this initial stage of defining the larger relationships between lighter and darker areas on his face and I've pretty much defined the shape of his face I've already achieved the likeness as you can see and uh, what I'm doing in this stage is I'm using a black colored pencil to work on the details and to add a little bit of texture on top. So as you can see most of the work was done with a charcoal pencil but right now I'm just moving in with some of the details uh, with a black colored pencil and I'm also going to be adding some details with a charcoal pencil as well but I just feel like when I'm trying to produce a, um, some finer texture and when I'm trying to imitate the texture of the skin I find that a black colored pencil is very useful so I'm using all kinds of approaches here, all, t all, all kinds of strokes. Sometimes I'm using a tapered stroke and cross-hatching a little bit. Sometimes I, I'm doing a little bit of back and forth scribbling or circular motion or something like that. Sometimes I'm just, um, I'm just uh, using a pencil to draw in these uh, small irregularities and pores and uh, blackheads in the skin, as you can see. So uh, I'm just trying to create some variation in the skin in order to make the skin as realistic as possible. And <clears throat> also I'm adding some wrinkles here and there. This line work requires a little bit more precision and, uh, and that's why that black colored pencil is allowing me to create these thinner and maybe slightly lighter lines that I otherwise wouldn't be able to create with a with such a soft charcoal pencil so I find that this combination works pretty well even though like you know like I said you can see that at least 90% of the work was done with a 
with a charcoal pencil and the blending tools naturally. <coughs> so there are a lot of these smaller wrinkles in the skin around the cheekbones and the cheeks and around the eyes and I'm really trying to produce a lot of texture there to make the skin a lot more interesting. I think that when you're drawing these um, realistic or semi-realistic drawings which aren't entirely photorealistic but look almost photorealistic to a lot of viewers um, the key is to create an illusion of uh, detail so to create a lot of these interesting textures that entertain the, the eye of the viewer so that they can feel uh, like they're looking at a real skin, a real uh, texture or something and if I feel like I've produced too much texture, I can always use a brush to soften it a little bit. But I like the work that I did around the cheeks and on the cheekbones, and I'm going to keep doing the same uh, along the rest of the cheeks and the rest of the face. So uh, I've noticed that he has a lot of these um, small irregularities in the skin. I don't really know whether they're pores or uh, um, some other types of uh, irregularities or maybe blackheads or maybe it's just stubble from the beard but I'm just adding a lot of these small black dots to indicate to indicate these uh, details on the skin. Most of it on the on the cheeks and on the chin most of it I I think it's just stubble but around the cheekbones and around the nose, nose it's just uh, pores and blackheads I think so I'm drawing all of these interesting imperfections on his skin which will make my portrait uh, a lot more realistic eventually and you can see how the left side of the face is starting to look a lot more detailed so I'm just going to keep doing that and this process does require a little bit of patience because I have to draw each and every one of the, these details individually I can't really try to create an illusion of detail just by scribbling but I try to do that whenever I can one of the things I kept repeating whether I draw landscapes or portraits is that you have to allow your pencil to work for you and you have to allow it to create a texture uh, in combination with the grain of the paper so I, I'm using that as well but the thing is that sometimes I have to go in and add some additional details drawing each and every one of these details separately and that's usually the case when I have such a large portrait that needs to be as realistic and as detailed as possible <coughs> I corrected the shape of the nose a little bit and I'm still adding a little bit more detail around the mustache and around the chin because I felt that the chin was uh, needed to be a little bit darker I also added a few highlights on the lips to make them uh, a, little more, a little more glossy I guess a little more shiny and I did some more shading around the eyes as well because I felt that I needed a little more shadow there so that they wouldn't appear too small and I'm just adding a few more details on the cheeks and trying to make the face uh, even more interesting and detailed Another thing that I also did, I uh, cleaned up the edge, the, the right edge of the face because it's important for me to have a very very clean edge there and that's why I had to keep cleaning up my portrait. You can see how, in, how much more interesting the, uh, the skin looks now if you just uh, rewind back, rewind the video back uh, for about 10 minutes or so, you can see how much more detail I've added. And I'm just fixing some of the edges around the cap and around the face and adding some additional details on the face and around the mustache and uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, I'm going to be moving on to his jersey and I'm not going to draw too much of it because this is going to be a classic portrait and I'm just going to create a vignette out of the rest of the 
body. So I just faded the lower part of the jersey into the white of the paper and towards the lower edge and now I'm just doing some additional cleaning up and one of the things that I've already mentioned a lot of times is that when you have a large portrait done mostly in soft charcoal like this there's going to be a ton of residue that's why the cleaning up process too, took so uh, so long and one of the things I like to do when the portrait is done and sprayed with a fixative because at, at this point I already removed the protective tape and I sprayed it with a fixative but one of the things that I like to do is put down some finishing touches and make sure that I have clean edges and um, just that I can add a few details here and there. So I always recommend that you use a kneaded eraser for cleaning up because it doesn't leave any residue and it doesn't leave any damage on the paper because when you clean things up with a regular eraser you can sometimes push the charcoal into the paper and then it can be difficult to clean up the mess. I signed my drawing in the lower right corner and the drawing is now finished. I hope you enjoyed this drawing process. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to see longer videos you can always go and check out my Patreon. Once again, thanks for watching and bye for now.